Oh, 
us, Father. Come, Lord. Come and pour your spirit out upon us, Lord. God, right now we, we come before you with open arms, open hearts, Lord, ready to receive you and everything you offer, God, your love, your grace, your mercy, your truth, God. God, this morning we want to, to hear from you. We want to see you. We want to feel you, Lord. So God, we, we lay everything at your feet, all, anything that's in our way from, from being with you, God. God, we ask for forgiveness for, of our sins. Thank you for, for that grace and that mercy. God, we ask that you would take our, our struggles, our worries, our doubts. God, anything that's keeping us from you. Allow us to trust in you, to hope in you, and to find the peace from you. God, as a church this morning, we, we come before you ready to worship you, ready to praise you, ready to give you more, God, because you deserve it, Lord. So God, speak to us, each and every one of us, where we're at right now. And teach us to be the, the church that you're calling us to be. So that when we do get to gather in person one more time, Lord, we're ready to we're ready to, to worship you and to honor you and to glorify you in ways like we've never done before. God, we love you. We continue to lift up those that are hurting, those that are broken today. Asking that they would turn to you, seeking you and finding your their peace in you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. It's in your name we pray. Amen. Good morning, Remnant Church. Oh, we're excited that you're here with us, and today's a special day. Today is Valentine's Day, and so thank you for taking time out of your romantic day to uh, to join us uh, online. Um, you know, I, I joke about it being a romantic day, but we did uh, um, a couple of Valentine's Day trivias this week uh, when we were doing youth group, and uh, we learned some pretty sad facts about Valentine's Day. Some like 60% of men forget that it's Valentine's Day and, uh, and don't actually do anything for their wives. And so I was uh, just wondering how many men woke up this morning and it was just, you know, just realizing, oh, it's Valentine's Day today. My hope and my prayer is that regardless of whether you're married, whether you're dating, whether you're single, that you feel the love from God. God is our ultimate Valentine. He is the lover of our souls. And so my prayer this morning is just that you receive all of your value and your worth and, and every ounce of love that you feel, you receive that from your Savior today as you join us together on this, uh, this Valentine's Day. Well, again, good morning. Welcome. Glad that you're here with us today as we uh, begin our day with just with a few announcements for you guys, and then we'll jump into some more worship. But let me just remind you of a, a few things that we have going on. RemnantChurchIV.com, that's our website. That's a place where you can check in with us and uh, find out what's going on. Also, stay updated on what's happening. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, of course, YouTube. These are all places where you can connect with us during the week. So we invite you and encourage you to be doing that. And I uh, want me to remind you guys that during the week, there's also opportunities for you to connect with us uh, over Bible studies. So men, there's a great opportunity for us. And keep in mind, we have switched the date for our, the day of the week for our Zoom Bible study. So men, we're meeting on Mondays instead of Tuesdays. 
Had a great group that uh, joined up this last Monday, but Monday's at 6.30, men. Plan on being on Zoom. If we don't have your, uh, your email or your phone number so that we can text you or email you the link for Zoom, please go to the website and, uh, and go to that page and submit that so that we can make sure you're part of our men's Bible study. And I say the same thing for the women as well meeting on Wednesdays at 7 p.m. I know the ladies are having a great time in this study that uh, that Jill is leading on Wednesday nights. And so, ladies, again, if you are not um, registered for this Bible study, well, I say registered, but all, simply all you have to do is give us your information that, so that we can send you the link and make sure that you can get on the Bible study. But these are great midweek Bible studies that are happening, and so I encourage you guys to be a part of that. And then don't forget, Youth Night is meeting on Instagram Live at 6.30 and so that's another place where uh, our young people can connect with each other and can also win some free stuff. It's pretty cool that happens on Thursday nights at 6.30. <clears throat> on Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m., uh, Jerry's leading his Bible study, Be Different. So this is our, our midweek uh, Bible study. And so we encourage you guys to jump on. And notice we had a few more folks that jumped on this Wednesday and were able to be there live. And uh, just want to remind you that the live chat is available so you can uh, talk to each other, fellowship with each other every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Learn from God's Word. The Bible studies be different. Lessons from Sermon on the Mount. So we encourage you to jump on and join us every Wednesday at 10 on our YouTube channel. Don't forget that we support some incredible ministries. Casa Caritas down in Mexicali doing amazing work and Burning Bush International in Uganda. So both of these organizations are serving the people that um, that have great needs, and so we encourage you to um, continue to give and support these ministries. You can do that through the Tithely app or website. So it's tithe.ly. You can go on the website, or you can download the app to your Apple or Android device and uh, and give that way. So we encourage you to do do that. You can give to these ministries. You can give to Remnant, and uh, here's another ministry you can give to as well. Youth for Christ, another great ministry that we support. YFC is having their annual golf tournament. And this is a date that actually uh, was pushed back, and so um, it's a new date. Saturday, February 27th is when this is happening. So I know we mentioned this last couple weeks, but if you would like to, to help in any way with this, then you can give us a call at uh, the office there at Youth for Christ and um, connect with us that way, and we'll make sure that you get to participate, be a part of this. If you'd like to compete in the golf tournament, of course, that's an option as well. So I encourage you to get a hold of the Youth for Christ office for that. Ladies, this is getting so close. I know you're pumped about this. So our women's retreat is happening February 19th to the 21st. That's like next weekend. So ladies, you still have an opportunity to register for this retreat. So if you have not done so, go on our website, click on the, uh, the slide for the women's retreat and fill out the form. I encourage you ladies to get registered. Plan on being there that weekend. It's gonna be a great weekend. I know you're gonna enjoy it. And I know that you're gonna learn a lot and get to connect and fellowship with the other ladies that attend. And so make sure that you are doing that. So ladies, that is this next weekend. So I encourage you to, to be a part of that. And then men, we've got our men's retreat coming up quick, April 16th through the 18th. So men, same thing for you. You can go on the Remnant website and you can register for the men's retreat. So we encourage you to do that. And as we get a little bit closer, we'll talk a little bit more about the theme and uh, what we're going to be doing for our men's retreat. So men, make sure that you're on that. Write it down somewhere. April 16th through the 18th. Plan on being with us that weekend. Now, folks, we have been, feels like we've been talking about reopening Remnant since we first started um, into this whole COVID um, experience together. And, uh, and, and, you know, this is probably the first time we actually started to, to feel like, yes, this is going to happen. It's, it's coming up. And so we want you to know that, um, that this is something that we have prayerfully uh, talked about and, uh, and just discussed. We mentioned last week that with the new Supreme Court ruling that your um, leadership was going to get together during the week and talk about this and we were going to post an update. So we did that. We met together. We did post an update, so if you missed that, then we encourage you to go to the website and you can uh, read the update there, remnantchurchiv.com slash reopening. So that's a place where you can find that. But let me just say that, um, you know, we, we really considered 
all of the pros and cons of reopening at this time. And as we weighed those things and just, just really talked through what it would be like for us to reopen at this time, um, your leadership team decided that we should probably wait a little bit longer before uh, we open. And there were a bunch of reasons, but some of those reasons were super important to us. And uh, one of those reasons is that we could only assemble uh, 45 people in the building where we meet. And uh, we were looking at each other and saying, okay, with just us and our families, that's already 22 people, which means we could only invite um, 20 something more people to, to join us. And so um, this was a tough decision for us because um, knowing that we would have to turn some people away was not a good feeling. None of us wanted to, to do that. And we discussed other uh, pros and cons. And uh, finally, we landed on this decision to, uh, to not reopen at this time, to reopen at a time when we can um, gather more folks together and we could have a more a comfortable uh, worship experience together. And so that was the decision we came to. If you'd like more information about that, please, like I said, re visit RemanChurchIV.com slash reopening, and you can read more about the things that we discussed and we talked through. And I know that um, for some of you, and maybe many of you, as you look at other churches and see them reopening, and you've got a lot of questions and, and things like that, um, please talk to us. We'd love to, to know how you're feeling. We encourage you to um, give us a message. You know, you can always send us an email or just... Um, give us a call and uh, we'd love to, to be able to talk to you more about that. But uh, again, we love you guys. We care about you. Um, your safety means so much to us and your um, experience at Remnant Church as we're a, a church family together, that is also so important to us. And this is the reason that uh, we've uh, made this decision. And so uh, again, stay updated. I encourage you to stop by the website and get more information on that. Well, today, I'm excited because Beautifully Broken, our series that we started just a few weeks ago, is continuing and God is continuing to show us really cool things through this series. So we're finding beauty in our brokenness and this has been so good. Guys, if you've missed any of our series, I just want to challenge you and encourage you to go back and listen to any of the ones that you might have missed. You can do that via the website or of course here on YouTube, but just encourage you to not miss out on anything that God has for you in this series today. Chris is going to be sharing, and his message is Sin Sarah. So we encourage you to take notes, encourage you to use social media. We've got uh, all that stuff there on the screen for you. So this is a way that you can let people know about what you're learning here at Remnant Church. Looking forward to it. I know God's got some really good stuff for us today as well. Again, thank you guys for joining us. We love and miss you guys. So, uh, so glad that you're able to be a part of our, our worship experience together online and uh, really, really look forward to a time where we can be together in person. And uh, we, we know that that is coming up. And so we're excited that that's drawing near. And so again, guys, this is your time to just be engaged in our, our worship and our learning together from God's word. I know it's going to be a blessing to you. I know it's going to be meaningful for you. And so let's see what God has for us today. Love you guys.
surrender everything to you, our hearts, our minds, our souls. God. We keep our hearts focused on you and your spirit and your truth today, Father. Asking, Lord, that you would continue to come and, and speak through, through Chris today to teach us, to move us, to lead us with your truth, God. Speak through him. Keep our hearts focused on this message, Lord. are yours, Lord. Thank you, God. It's in your name. Amen.
Good morning, Remnant. I'm the worst husband. You know what I forgot? Valentine's Day. I, w I had a whole Valentine's Day message prepared at the beginning of the year. I said, I'm not going to forget it this year. I'm going to remember. And it's February 14th again. I'm joking. <laughs> I uh, didn't quite forget it. I did forget it for Remnant. But uh, I, you guys, uh, just a little confession before I speak. I'm the worst at gift giving. Uh... Of course, I do the flowers and the chocolates, but you always feel like you have to do a little extra on Valentine's Day, or, or is that just it? D did I miss the memo? Is is that it, and then we're done? But uh, last year, my wife thanks me so much. I got her the best gift was my legs. I, what I got her for Valentine's Day last year was shorts for me. <laughs> Ever since we were married, I've only worn pants. She's like, you should wear shorts. You should wear shorts. All right. <laughs> Valentine's Day 2020 got her a pair of shorts for me. You're very welcome, Lena. And I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, good morning, Remnick. Good evening. Uh whenever you're watching, uh thank you for um thank you for tuning in. I started a uh new job this this week. I'm at a drive-through coffee shop. It's very fun, super, super fun. Our food and coffee are really delicious. Uh, at times, it gets a little hectic, but that's where I thrive, baby. It's awesome. It's fun. It's hectic. I like it. Uh, so since Monday, I, I, I started at the coffee shop Monday. Uh, this verse has just been burning in my head, right? The um, oh, I'm sorry. Can you get the... This verse has been burning in my head. The thought of work unto work unto God, right? Don't don't work for men, but but work as if you're working for Christ. Work unto Christ. Work unto Christ. It's just been in my head, and so for this message, I, I couldn't think of anything else other than talking about work, right? And and the and how we're supposed to work, and and what we're supposed to work, and who we're supposed to be working for. Side note: that just a, a little quick. Uh, encouragement or a little quick advice Bre read your scripture hide scripture in your heart you'll, you'll be surprised at how easy God speaks to you through his scripture when when you're doing daily things and scripture just pops in your head read scripture memorize scripture it's that that is a very easy way how God will God can speak to you this morning my message is sin sera Sorry, Jerry pronounced it. I mean, Jeremiah pronounced it wrong. Sincera. No, this is the Spanish word, sincera. Not sincere, but the words sincera without wax. I have an example sentence. Estos esquís sincera están listos para las aventuras. Oh, that's pretty good, right? The translation: These are waxless skis prepared for adventures. That was the only example I could find <laughs> with the word waxless. I don't know what wax does on skis. Uh, I, I'm pretty sure it does something, but waxless, without wax. It's going to be my message today. Uh, before I dive into more of uh, Sincera, I want to read the scripture. Ephesians 6, 5 through 8. This is where I'm going to be speaking out of um, most of today. Actually, I'm going to be speaking out of Paul's writings pretty much all day, all day. Well, how long are we here? Three hours? I'm, I'm just speaking for three hours? <laughs> no. Uh, I'm going to just be speaking out of, of Paul pretty much, the, my whole message. But let's read. Ephesians 6, 5 through 8. Bond servants, obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart as you would Christ, not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord, whether he is a bondservant or free. So I'm going to be talking about work. 
about work, and but more so, uh, we're, we're in this series, Beautifully Broken. It's the, the concept of kintsugi, taking a broken pot or a broken cup, mug, a uh, broken plate, broken bowl, and putting it back together, making it more beautiful, right? painting the, the scars with gold. And th- these concepts just kept flowing to me. It's really awesome. Uh, so work. How do we, as fixed pots, how are we supposed to work? Uh, as, at a new job, it, it's really fun. This is only printing in my head. What I like about this verse is it not only tells us what to do, but how to do it. Uh, just another side note, all of Ephesians 6 does this. And it is, gosh, I'm having the hardest time not just coming up to remnant when I speak and just reading a chapter of the Bible saying, amen, let's go do that. It's, it's so tough not to do that. And one of these days, I'm going to be tempted enough to do it. Just watch. I warn you guys. Um, so uh, all of Ephesians 6, I uh, challenge you today, go and read it. It is, it is great. This verse right here, this passage tells us not only how, what to do, but how to do it. Obey your earthly masters. Got it. How do I do that? With fear and trembling. With, uh, with the fear and trembling, that more so means with reverence, right? You, you, you don't, you don't want to displease your, your boss. You're kind of in fear of, of doing things that are not good, right? You're kind of in fear of, of doing the wrong thing. That's where Paul is telling us we need to be, with fear and trembling. And also with a sincere heart, as if you're working for Christ. A sincere heart, as if you're working for Christ. I highlighted the word sincere right there. And that is going to be the crux of my whole message. Is this pot, how are we supposed to work in this world? With fear and trembling and with a sincere heart. Uh, my message today is uh, sincera, literally the translation. Uh, I already gave you that perfectly fluent Spanish sentence. I, I really don't know. I can't re- recite it again. It's in and now it's out. So that's the last bit of Spanish I'm going to give you guys. The rest is going to be all English all day. My first point is repaired without wax. I'm going to give you a quick history lesson. Not so quick, but it is a history lesson. This word, uh, sincere, the, the, the word sincere comes from a Latin word, sine sera, uh, which literally means without wax. Uh, back in, uh, I want to say the 20s, uh, not, not where we are now, not the 1920s, definitely not the 1820s, but maybe year 20 and before. Uh, back in the 20s, that pots were an absolute essential commodity. Uh, if you were going to store anything of value, you would need to buy a pot that has a nice seal. And so every everyone needed one, right? If you if you were gonna if you were gonna salt your meats to preserve them, you would you would do it in a pot. If you were gonna hold pure water, you would hold it in a pot. If you were gonna hold your milk, you would do that in a pot or your precious uh, your precious oils uh, whatever you would need you would buy pots pots were definitely a hot commodity back in the 20s the year 20 and before Uh, but since so many of these were made and there was just so many being traded thousands and thousands and thousands of pots and some and they were made out of clay so a lot of them would break but since so many of these were made there was bound to be some flaws uh, uh, let me, like, I, I think today I, I gave an example. Have you guys ever bought Levi's? Right? There's, there's, everyone has Levi's. I think everyone here in this room, there's four of us, we're all wearing Levi's. Have you ever bought a pair of $60 Levi's, taken them home because you were completely confident they would fit, and tried to zip up the zipper, but it was crooked, and it didn't zip all the way, so it would just zip back down? And then you'd have to go back to low, oh, well, you'd have to go back to Costco throw the pants at the worker's face and say, hey, what did you do? This is your fault. And he's begging and pleading with you. No, I, I, I just work here. No, you give me the right pair of pants, sir, this time with the zipper fixed. 
I, I would imagine that's how it was back then. But with pots, everyone wears Levi's today. Everyone. And there's bound to be some defects. But I think I'm, I'm like the only one. There's probably one in a million pairs of pants that have a defected zipper. But back then, I don't think they had quality assurance departments. And so what people did instead of quality assur assurance was they would fix the pots that were chipped or broken or weren't made quite right, and they would just fill in the holes and fill in the cracks with wax. Uh, but back then, there was more at stake, right? Uh, today, it, I said the equivalent's a pair of pants, but you can survive your, a day or two without pants, maybe. Uh, but back then, a broken pot could definitely be detrimental to, to your daily life. You bought a pot because you needed to store some fresh water. If it had a hole in it that you couldn't see because someone repaired it with wax, you now have a drain and you don't have any more fresh water for your family. If, if you needed a nice seal, but you didn't know that the pot was repaired with wax, you put your meats in there and, and salt and try to preserve them, but your meat has turned because it wasn't a complete seal. It was repaired with wax. The same thing with milk or, or anything that you would store in these pots. Thank, thank God for quality assurance departments. Thank you, Levi's. I'm sorry for disparaging your company. But they didn't have it, so that's what they would do. You would have a broken pot, just slightly, just the, the slightest defect, and you would fix it. No one could tell the difference. But that's where we get this whole word from, sincere. The word literally means without wax. What I imagine would happen was someone would get a pot, they would take it home, they would try to fill it with water, and they would see a leak. Well, I, I didn't see this leak here before. What, what happened? And they would touch the leak where it's at, and they would take off the wax and say, oh, okay, all right. And so they would go back to the pot maker, and they would say, look at this pot. You made this pot with a defect, and you tried to hide it with wax. I want this pot sincere. I want it without wax. I love how we get this, this concept, this word sincere, honest, genuine. We get this word, and the best way to describe the word is a negative. I, I love that. I think this is like the easiest word to, easiest concept to grasp. Without wax. Sincere. I love this. That's a quick history lesson. So uh, I love this analogy so much, uh, having a sincere heart, a heart with no wax. Uh, I think right here in Ephesians, uh, as workers, we're supposed to work with a sincere heart, a heart that is not fake, not repaired with wax. You guys, we don't, we don't have a God that repairs our brokenness with fake wax. We have a God that repairs our hearts with gold, with, with something precious, and it will never break. Right? And, and Jeremiah, uh, in the book of Jeremiah, we were reminded by Jerry that God is the pot maker. He'll break you down and remold you again without defects, without the flaws. When we are broken again, uh, fixed and repaired, God doesn't simply make us look repaired. We are 100% new, sincera, without wax. I have a couple of images here for you. Right here uh, in our verse, it said we are not to be fake. We are to be sincere. Sincere means without wax. Here's an example of, of a broken pot that someone might fix with, with wax. Right? It's not too bad of a crack. Uh, it, it's kind of just a sliver. But what they would do is they would get the clay that they made the pot out of, mix it with wax, and shove it in there, and smooth it out. You would never notice. But that pot is useless. I need something that seals. I need something that won't leak. This is what Paul is describing as people pleasers. We have defects. We have flaws. Flaws that are, uh, this is how we're not supposed to be. We're not supposed to be this way. We are supposed to be sincere, fixed, perfect again, born again, 
perfect, 100% fixed. People please us to the left. We try to be fake. We try to, we try to be a people pleaser. We, we're just doing things just to, to get a step up and so other people can look at me, look at me. I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. That, that's the people pleaser. That's, that's the image to your left. To your right, that's what God does with us. He makes us sincere. He fixes us 100%. Repaired without wax. When we are born again, when we were born again, God did not simply make us look repaired. He sincerely fixed us. Sincera, no wax. We were made sincere with no longer a need to be fake. We don't need to be fake. We don't need to pretend. We don't need to be people pleasers. That's not, that's not what, what God wants us to, to how, that's not how God wants us to be in our workplace. Sorry, I was hard to get that out. As, as we're going day to day at our job, at our work, we are to work with sincerity. Be sincere without wax, no, no longer a need to be fake. And uh, thinking about work, I, was, uh, I had this other concept burning in, in my head. Reward third. I'll explain that in a second. Let me read this verse one more time. I'll let me read this passage one more time. Bond servants. Obey your earthly masters with fear and trembling, with a sincere heart, as you would Christ. Not by the way of eye service, as people pleasers, but as bond servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord, not to men. <laughs> Excuse me. Knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. I highlighted this part right here, knowing that Whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. Reward third. What does that mean? Uh, I really wanted to, to take this concept, uh, this concept that, I, that uh, this modern day philosopher said. If, here's a little fun fact about me. I love the show Dirty Jobs. I think it's my favorite show. It had 10 seasons. I was... I actually cried the day they took it off of Netflix. Uh, I, it was seriously my favorite show. I'd put it on. I'd go to sleep. I would see Mike Rowe do all kinds of crazy things and, and be entertaining doing it. I, I, I think it's my favorite show. Uh, maybe Star Trek Next Generation. But this is a close second is Dirty Jobs. Mike Rowe, modern-day philosopher. Who would have known? This guy that uh, all the show was was he would... Uh, go somewhere and work and they would film it and uh, whatever it was whether it was a farmer uh, a windshield uh, a window cleaner at a skyscraper a, a soybean maker uh, what, whatever it was right uh, an iron worker glass worker he did all these jobs and something that he came up with this philosophy he came up with was safety third and it has and it has kind of two meanings to it. The, the meaning is safety is third, not first, right? He, he said that whenever he would go on a job site, he would see these signs that say safety first. Uh, and there was one thing that I, I heard him say all the time. Uh, this is kind of the first meaning of his safety third philosophy is uh, the two ideas of safety third, depending on others for your safety gets you hurt. Depending on other people for your safety gets you hurt. So when you see things like safety first on a wall and make sure you have this, make sure you have that, Mike Rowe was saying you get complacent. I have this rope tied to my, to my belt or to my tethered to me, so if I fall off this, this cliff, I'm safe. You start walking a little, little more... Uh, you start walking a, a little less cautiously. What well, something he said was crab crab boating, right? Or crab fishing. Uh, he said that when he was out crab fishing, there were thirty foot swells. No one was tethered. They were doing their job. They got the the crab traps and they put them on there. And a thirty foot swell would come, crash, and everyone would hold on and start getting to work. Mike Rowe said he went to the captain and said, "What what do we do? There's no safety precautions." Would uh, are there any standards? And the captain said, you know, you, I brought you out here so you can work to make money. N not, 
if, if you want to be safe, that's on you. That's the first philosophy. The second one, the second idea of safety third is the one I kind of want to focus on. And it's simply the reality of safety. If safety is first and all important, why go out and work at all? It's not safe to scale a building to, to wipe down the windows or go crab fishing. It's definitely not safe to do those things. The safest place is at home, away from unpredictable outcomes. People drive, work, and expose themselves to danger because they need to. Not everyone can make a living by sitting on the couch. There are some people that make livings by sitting on a couch or playing video games. Those guys have it made. I, I, don't, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I need to play video games all day and make some money. Not everyone could do that. Some people have to go out and, uh, and expose themselves to, da to danger to make a living. Uh, I, I, like, I, I like this concept a lot. And I'm going to take a little part of this concept. But safety third, it, it's this idea. Here's why safety, it's just a reality, is not first. You have to figure out, is it worth it? If you get up off of the couch and you look around and say, I need to make a living somehow, is the first thing you're going to say, I, I need to get off the couch and whatever I do, it needs to be safe. No. The, the first thing you're saying is, I need to get up and make a living. Is it going to be worth it? Right? Is, is it worth it to go to the beach and collect bags of sand? A uh, bag of sand here, bag of sand here, $10 bags of sand. I don't think you'll get much money. It's probably not worth selling bags of sand. You, you, you're probably better getting crab, going out in the ocean, taking crab out of the sea. Uh, have you guys ever had garlic butter crab? Stick it in there, you rip open the legs. Oh man, I'd, I'd pay $20 a plate of, or a plate of crab. It's lucrative, right? It is worth it. The second consideration, can it be done? Me personally, I live in Imperial Valley. I would love to sell you crab and make some money. I don't have a boat. I don't, I don't have an ocean to get these crab. Uh, is it worth it? Yes, it is worth it. $20 a plate for crab, absolutely it's worth it. Can it be done? Ah, I can't really do it, no. So there's those two things to consider before safety. But this is why safety's third, is if it is worth it, and you can go get the crab, and you can go out and fish for it, now can you do it safely? I like this philosophy with Mike Rowe saying safety third, it's just the reality of the situation. If we put safety at the forefront before everything, we would do nothing. We would not go get crab, it is unsafe. Uh, we would, we just wouldn't do it if safety was first. Sadly, though, safety third is not really a biblical principle. I couldn't really tie that exactly to my message, but I, but I took the importance, right? We always heard this line, safety third. Sa I mean, we always heard this line, safety first. Safety first, safety first. Whenever you're out working, hey, you got to be safe, safety first. It's not the reality. Safety is third it's just the reality but it is high right is, is it worth it can it be done let's make it safe the fourth thing would probably be let's make it more efficient let's make it bigger right these there's way other things but safety is third. It's just the reality so now when i look at this verse and i say reward third it's simply the reality let's go back Rendering service, in verse 7, rendering service with a good will as to the Lord and not to man, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. It's simply a reality that this God in his wisdom, in his ultimate wisdom, created this earth, created this world, created us uh, to, to work, to do things for him, and it's a reality that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. But you guys, we are supposed to have a sincere heart. We're not supposed to go over to our workplace and work as hard as we can and look at our boss and, and say, you know, God, where's my reward? I, I need my reward, right? I'm, I'm going to go work so I could get the rewards. 
No, you're missing the point. Reward comes third. Reward shouldn't be the first thing you want. I, I, don't, I don't think that's how a sincere heart looks. Maybe there's arguments about that, but a sincere heart doesn't look to, I'm going to work really hard so, so that God can give me some stuff. I don't think that's what it is. Reward is third. And like safety third, it's just the reality of it. There are rewards. There are earthly rewards. That's just the reality. But that comes third. Let's look here. And it goes like this. A sincere heart does things first out of the love it has for others. Second, obeying God's commands in that process. Third, knowing the reality that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. See, we're not supposed to put that third thing first. We're not supposed to say, I'm going to get some earthly reward, so I'm going to work hard. No, you guys. Reward is third. Out of the love you have for others, you're, gonna, you're going to obey God, doing what God has given you. And it's just the reality. It's just the way God created the universe. I do fully believe there are earthly rewards. And, and, and I don't think this is a completely foolproof thing, right? I, I definitely believe there are Christians out there who are absolutely obedient to whatever God is doing, who are going to get beat today. It, th- there are Christians today that are going to be completely obedient that might go hungry today. It's not a a precise one for one. But that is a reality. I fully believe that this is a reality. But this can't be our focus. Our reward, our earthly reward cannot be our focus. Our focus is a sincere heart for the love of others and obeying Christ. And I think it is simply the reality that we, it says right here in verse 8, knowing that whatever good anyone does, this he will receive back from the Lord. This is my second point, reward third. My third point, it's always hard, my third point, because it's always Jesus. (laughs) My third point is always Jesus. Speaking about work, I I had, Paul's writing is just always in my head. Um, and, and these were the verses that, that came to my mind when it comes to work. I, I go and I work at the coffee shop and I try to do it with a sincere heart. I try to, do, to be as loving and as kind as an, and as obedient as I can to, my, to the authorities that are around me. And then I think of these when it comes to the word work. It's always Jesus. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. Let's read that one first. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of works that no one should boast. Not as a result of works that no one should boast. And I believe that's consistent with, my, with the point I just said before. Right? The reward comes third. And it's not because of your work. But Chris, in your second point, you said, if you work and you obey God, you'll get rewards. Let me, let me get to that. In 2 Timothy 3, 16 through 17, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9, we see that it is by God's grace we are saved through faith, and this isn't from us working, it's the gift of God. And so we're saved, but we don't have to work for it. But then in 2 Timothy, God says that Scripture is provided for you for good works. What's going on? Are we supposed to work? Are we supposed to not work? You are supposed to work, you guys. That, that, is, that, is, the, the only, that is the reality of life. God created this universe. You are supposed to work. What, uh, and, and that goes in, in every aspect. You're, you're supposed to go make a living for your family. You're supposed to, to, to bring home the bacon. You're also not just supposed to sit on your hands with your Christianity. It's a reality, you guys. But God kind of makes it simple. If you work with a sincere heart, with fear and trembling to your authorities, 
and the people you work for, that is how you work. I, I love in, in 2 Timothy it says, uh, all scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. It's just a fact God wants you to work. God does not want you to sit on your hands with your Christianity. He wants you to be the best that you can be at your work, in your household, uh, with your in-laws, with, with your parents. And how do we do that? I said in the beginning, I challenged you to read your, your Bible, read the scriptures and memorize it and, and have these and hide scripture in your heart. When I was at work, that's all I thought about was working to the Lord, working to the Lord. In Second Timothy, Paul is telling us that all Scripture is inspired by God and that the Scripture uh, is training us so that the man of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. Again, you guys, we don't work for rewards. They are God's gift. Actually, let me, let me say it like this. We are not necessarily salesmen. We're representatives. We're, our, we are examples of God's love that he shows us. Not necessarily salesmen. Again, we don't work for our rewards. They are a gift from God. But as representatives... How else do we show off, right? Because in all honesty, we have something great. We have something that we want to give others. But you're a representative, not necessarily a salesman. As we dive into God's word and obey our ultimate master with sincerity, without wax, he prepares the good work to be done. This is how it is. You guys, I, I close it off this way. It's always Jesus. A heart for God is without wax. We were created, we fell and broke with our sin, and we were sincerely repaired, saved by the gift of God, not by our works, but repaired nonetheless with the purpose to fulfill the good works he equipped us for. It's time to go to work, you guys with a sincere heart. Don't be fake, don't be a people pleaser, but work as, as if you're working for Christ himself. Obey, respect, and fear your, your bosses or anyone in, in authority over you. This is what God has us to do. Let's not be fake, you guys. Sincere hearts without wax, sincera. Let's pray. God, we give you so much thanks for this morning. I, I pray, God, that, uh, that this attitude in us um, would, would foster. God, the, the, another reality is there, there were a lot of people that um, there were a lot of people that were displaced from work because of COVID, um, because of just things that are happening right now. Uh, my hope, God, is that uh, as we get COVID under control and people get back to work and people start. Um, start getting back to doing what they do to make a living. God, I, I, first off, I, I pray that, that that will happen. I pray that that is your will, God. Let that happen, God. The people that are out of work, get them back in. And I especially pray for those people getting back into work, that they follow what you say in Ephesians. Work as if we're working, have them work as if we're working for you, God. Jesus. Holy Spirit, help us. Keep this in our hearts and keep this in our, head, in, our, in our minds. Sincere without wax. Not people pleasers. But we want to work for you. We thank you so much. In Jesus' name, amen.
my heart is burning But I'm still learning About your grace And in the waiting You're captivating My soul is aching For your embrace And Father take my life Make me more like you I've seen you take what's broken And make it just right Help me see the world Through your kingdom point of view Lord, return Make all things new Seasons changing, hearts rearranging. You're still invading this broken soul. No separation, no hesitation, just fascination. I'm lost for words. the break of dawn and I will take this moment to sing redemption songs and as I watch and pray Lord I know it won't be long till you return make all things new it's what you do Lord, we know you're making making us new. You're working in each and every one of us, God. And when you repair us, Lord, you fix us completely, fully, just like new, not repaired, but new, God. God, and as we seek you and as we allow you to work in us, God, I pray that, that we would go out and do your work fully and completely. Doing the work like, like we know you're there. Like we know you're with us. God, we thank you for today. We thank you for this message. We thank you for just for everything that you do for us, for this church. God, and we do, we ask that you would complete, uh, continue to work in each and every one of us. And that we as your church, God, would allow you to, to do that work. Change our hearts and make us new, God. Thank you, Lord. It's in your name. Amen.
in it.